thank you for joining us for another episode of Business PND for the year 2015. Last week in Waigani, Treasurer Patrick Pruach presented the 2016 National Budget to Parliament. The government presented a supplementary budget of 14.8 billion kina and a 2016 budget of 14.2 billion kina. The biggest cut in the supplementary budget is from the administrative sector, which took a cut of 756 million kina. The 2016 PNG budget has been framed in a much different environment than those preceding it. Prior to 2016, the PNG government was deficit financing much needed expenditure in key priority areas, such as health, education, law and order, and transport, on the back of substantial expected revenues from its resources, tax, and dividend streams. Along with the rest of the world, the government's commodity price assumptions received a nasty shock at the beginning of this year, when the oil price virtually halved. Among other things, that significantly impacted the revenue of the PNG LNG project, which the government has equity in as the LNG prices were related to oil prices. The PNG LNG project has been producing consistently in excess of its original rated capacity. This has softened the revenue impact to some extent. To add to that, the country is now experiencing drought conditions which have shut down the operations of the Octedi mine and lately Pogera also, and are already impacting food production in large parts of the country, relying on subsistence agriculture. The government took some time to communicate exactly what measures it was taking in response to these events, but has now clarified that to a much greater degree by announcing a 2015 supplementary budget, which was handed down in tandem with the 2016 budget. That supplementary budget sets out the areas in which the government expects to raise additional revenue for 2015 and cut expenditure. The government has also announced recently a major revision of the structure of its ownership of its own commercial enterprises and utilities through what is called the Kumul Consolidation Agenda. The government has restated its enthusiasm for public-private partnerships and says it will work to improve the climate for such cooperative ventures. As the Pacific Games was a centerpiece of government planning in 2014, its holding of the APEC conference in 2018 will be a centerpiece for this and upcoming budgets. It is noted that the APEC administrative body has received a budget allocation of 80 million kina in 2016 to this end. As well as that, the government has made clear that it does not intend to lose focus in its aims to improve PNG metrics and outcomes in key focus areas of health, education, law and order, and transport. Those areas continue to receive substantial allocations in the budget. Welcome back. Ella Motors, the country's leading distributor of the Toyota brand of vehicles, revealed the new eighth generation of the Hilux. In what was a spectacular show of lights, music and fireworks, the brand's new sixth element made its debut in Port Moresby last Friday. Motor vehicle enthusiasts turned out in droves at the Rita Flynn Sports Complex to witness the spectacular debut of the Toyota Hilux sixth element. And it certainly lived up to expectations, as amidst a dazzling display of fireworks and light shows, the sixth element made its grand entrance. One could say the Toyota Hilux was built for Papua New Guinea. With our rough terrains and roads, the Hilux has been a popular vehicle for PNG customers since its introduction in the 1980s. As the concept shows, uh, it got tougher, means uh, stronger. The frame has a, uh, has a uh, wider frame and it has enhanced the strength of the body. And also uh, the interior has a very luxury uh, interior, which you can see from the uh, very emotional uh, uh, designs. And uh, also the riding comfort is maybe the uh, biggest uh, effort. Because of the suspension uh, modification, uh, it has made a, a very big uh, what, a smoothness on the riding comfort. The sixth element uses the keen look design language that has already been used in the Toyota E170 with slim projector headlights and LED daytime running lights. 
Yes, I think the price is the thing that which you are interested in most, uh, but uh, it varies from the range. And uh, what I can say is that, uh, first of all, the high range is got higher. But the low range, uh, which uh, from the previous model, the spec has improved a lot. So you can see that the low range uh, model has increased uh, spec uh, specification a lot. So it has come like into the middle spec area. So price is like uh, linking with that, but it has a similar range of price from the last model. Airlines PNG has just rebranded its name and will now trade as PNG Air. This is the second time the company has undergone a rebranding exercise. The business PNG team was at the remarkable events. Last week in Port Moresby, Airlines PNG officially launched the rebranded version of itself, PNG Air. With speeches from the Prime Minister, MRDC representatives, and PNG Air Company CEO Murali Siva, who stated that rebranding the company was a two year working progress that was finally launched this year. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it gives me great pleasure today to uh, officially uh, launch the new rebranding PNG Air and, of course, welcoming this new aircraft for the airline. It was a spectacular event with the light, smoke, dramatic music, the whole works. the former airlines PNG rebrand its name and image, but they also launched a new fleet for the company, the ATR-72, as well as redesigning their uniforms to match the new PNG Air image. Business PNG had the privilege to speak to PNG Air's chief commercial officer, Paul Abbott, in their new ATR-72. Um, the revamp was driven really because we invested in the new ATR and decided that we'd changed so much of our business fundamentally, we'd gone a long way from the old airlines PNG days, that the, the company deserved a new brand, a fresh approach to the market because so much had changed. So customer service had changed, uh, the product had changed with the introduction of the new aircraft, our safety programs had changed, our philosophy in terms of how we went to market had changed. And we also believed we'd come a long way because we had now consolidated our product as a domestic product, hence the name PNG Air, which puts the country at the first in the first instance, which is our key priority. So we took this as an opportunity to basically signal the, the entire change through a complete rebrand and it also helps serve as a, as a key message to our customers and our staff alike that things were changing in the airline and we were moving forward, we were progressing. He spoke about the concepts behind the new designs and much talked about public view of how airlines PNG being accident prone and how they've taken new safety measures with the revamp to assure customers that they've done a total overhaul. When we started the design program we, did, we looked at having one key design to symbolize what we were as an airline and the more we looked at it the more we thought that that wasn't going to do justice to the country because the country is so diverse in terms of flora, fauna, coastline, people, languages. There was really no design or, or concept that would bring it all together into one. So we went the opposite way and decided we would take the best of various parts of the country and have those elements to symbolize what the airline was because we believed we stood for all of Papua New Guinea not just a small part of it. And the really neat thing about that is people, when they look at the design, see their part of the country there. And they get an instant connection to it. And we've tested it around the country and people will say, that's me over there. That's my country. That's my part of PNG that, on that part of the tail. So we get that immediate bond, which is really, really nice. Um, because at the end of the day, a brand is about bonding with people. People identify with our brand. They like it. They can see themselves reflected in it. But what it does mean is that our ex we need to strive even harder to live up their expectations because all of a sudden we're part of them 
So it's a really long process, really interesting, and um, hopefully people like it. I think, you know, that is, you can't deny it, that it's out there on the social media, and that's always hard to battle because people will use that as an opportunity to vent their, their thoughts. But since we, as an airline, since we consciously moved away from flying the Twin Otters into the small rural strips, which weren't well maintained, since we invested you know, over the last three or four years a lot more heavily in terms of technical expertise, safety expertise, and safety programs, we've gone, we are, we, today we are not the airline that we were five years ago. We've made huge, huge strides in the right direction. That, um, and we, we were the lead contractor for ExxonMobil in the LNG project for five years. And we all know that the safety standards of, standards of ExxonMobil are the highest in the world. Um, and we lived up to their standards and you know, we've, we've excelled. Newcrest, another very safety conscious organisation, we have their fixed wing charter operations in Italy here Island. Um, and we sat down with their people when we flew in there and talked about our safety programme, talked about um, what's occurred over the last few years to satisfy them that we were doing the right thing by their people when they wanted to fly with us and that's proven to be very successful. At the end of the day the best we can do is um, give the opportunity for people to come and try us, to come even come into our offices and talk to our people and understand what we do because we are very very careful about those matters now and as I said we are not the airline we were five or six years ago. My name is Eru Bualten. My current business which I'm doing is EB Tailoring. My education ended in my education was in Salvation Army in Koki. I started uh, grade one to grade six. And I couldn't go anywhere. After finishing my grade six, I decided to have a job uh, at Koki Lukpoi Wai tailoring shop. And I started my, I learned my sewing day I was taught by Mr. Paul Luke and his wife Winnie Luke down in Koki. It was the 1970s, early 70s. So since I was there, I learned a lot of uh, tailoring work. I started with junior sort of packing, ironing, ironing and packing. And then I found myself on the mission to learn about sewing, which my boss was so pleased with me to teach me in uh, sewing. So when I was sewing, I was so interested to do a lot to learn more in everything that I was going through when I was working there. Anything apart from men's shirts and trousers, Sulu, and ladies' uh, evening wear, graduations, and also wedding. I do a lot of wedding for uh, ladies who are really interested to come forward to. Bias for the wedding dress, armhole. So I just cut it. Bias cut, so I have to put it under the, uh, on the armhole of the wedding dress.
did some outfit for Governor for East New Britain and member for Telephone Mean. They suits and their they shirts. They open their collar shirts and some long sleeve shirts. So they were the first people like in Parliament area that I went through. I'd like to make some merry blouse, which I do a lot of merry blouse, lap lap skirts, and dresses and skirts, which people want me to take the orders, get the orders and so they a vest for ICA uniforms. They wanted vest so I made them vest. This is uh, the vest and and this is the long sleeve shirts. So I did this for Institute of uh, Christian Academy. It was an independence uh, color competition. So we decided to go into the competition where they uh, gave us some forms to fill in. So I was one of the women who entered the competition. And that's all we have for you tonight. For more business news, or if you would simply like to view this episode again, visit MTV online at www.mtv.com.pg. Or to join the conversation, like our page on Facebook for daily business news or follow us on Twitter with the Twitter handle at the bottom of the screen using the hashtag BusinessPNG. Until next week, enjoy the rest of your viewing on MTV. I'm Leanne Girari and this was BusinessPNG.